In my opinion, EasyBib is definitely the easiest and fastest way to make your bibliographies. And now that it is associated with our Jeffco Google Apps accounts, you can start a long-term bibliography or works cited page and just continue to add to it and then export it into Google Docs with a click and it does all your formatting for you. So what I've done first is gone to EasyBib.com and I do need to log in. From here, I'm not going to log in directly because I haven't set up an account with them. I'm going to sign in with my Google account. Now at this point, just make sure you use your Jeffco Google Apps account. Now this is the one that ends in at jeffcoschools.us. For you, it's your ID number at jeffcoschools.us. Your password is your birthday, the long birthday, so the eight digit birthday. Click sign in. Now I can create a new project. You can see I already have several bibliographies that go back several months ago and I can delete these if I would like to. I'm just going to create a new project. MLA7 is the default that you want to go with. And I'm going to title this sam sample works item, but you should probably call this whatever it relates to the project that you're working on. And click create. Now you can see my sample works cited that I will use as I go through. I'm just going to go ahead and click on bibliography. And now I'm taken to the area where I can enter my citations. Notice you always land on the website tab, so if you're not citing a website, don't start there. I'm going to go ahead and add a book first to show you how to do that. Now you can search by book title, keyword, or ISBN, but for many of our books, especially something like novels for students, there will be a bazillion that match that title. So I like to match with ISBN. The ISBN number is on the back of every book above its barcode. It's also on the back of the title page. It is not the barcode that the Ralston Valley Library puts on books. It is the actual barcode that is printed on the cover. And I'm going to click Cite This. And in theory, I should only get one direct match, but I can see that there are two. I'm going to go ahead and click Select, and I'm going to see how well EasyBib has filled in the areas. Now, are you citing the whole book? In many cases, you are not. You're only citing a chapter or selection that's in this book. So I'm going to go ahead and use that as a sample, and EasyBib will redirect me to the appropriate form. So I need to decide which chapter that I'm going to use, and the chapter that I'm using is called The Auction. I don't need to put in the quotation marks. EasyBib is going to take care of all the formatting for me. It is one of the chapters. And then I need to see if it's the same author. Now, EasyBib is going to default to the author who wrote this book to see if that's, that would make sense to be the same author. But in some of our books, they have different authors for each section. So check the author. In my case, the same author of the book is the same author of this chapter. Book title looks good. This does not have a volume, so I'm going to leave it blank. Everything else looks great. and I'm going to put in the page number that the chapter starts and the page number that it ends. And I'm going to click Create Citation. Okay, so this citation has been added. I am working in um, my sample works cited um, project, so I'm in the right spot. Now I'm going to add something from a database. So let me switch over to one of our databases. One of the things I always tell you about the databases is use these because your works cited is already done for you at the bottom. So I'm just going to highlight it and I'm going to copy it. And when I go to EasyBib, I don't want to have to retype all that in. I don't want to go to the database tab and have to go through all this work. So there's a nice little shortcut here under all 58 options. If you click this option here, you can see that on the, the other section over here, there's just something to paste a citation right in. The citation is already done for me, so I'm, all I'll do is click in this box and paste it in. I will click Create Citation. And I can see the citation added, and my bibliography or works cited is down here. Just kind of going along looks great. The last thing I think I'll show you how to cite is a website. They can be the trickiest to do. So I have one here from Steve Spangler Science. Just going to copy the URL address and go back to EasyBib. Make sure I'm on the website tab. And I'm going to paste in the address. Now, depending on the labels of this website, we'll see whether or not we get any kind of decent match. Okay, source type, content originally published on a website looks good. For this, you just need to kind of go through and fill in the blanks. EasyBib's going to put them in red, but you want to double check everything. So the article title is Mentos Diet Coke at Steve Spangler. Let's check it out and see if that's it. Mentos Diet Coke Geyser would be the best title for this. So I'm going to go back and just take out at Steve Spangler Science. 
the author of this webpage. Well, I know Steve Spangler's company puts it together, but that doesn't necessarily mean he's the author. So I'm going to scroll down. Don't see an author listed. Just his company. I can't tell if he wrote this or one of his staffers wrote it for sure. So I'm not certain. I'm going to leave the author blank and easy bibble format that for me. Publisher or sponsor is usually the company who puts this website together and it is Steve Spangler Science. Um, it's going to be you know National Geogra Geographic Society or whatever organization is publishing the site. URL looks good. The day it's electronically published. So let's go back to the website, see if we can find that. Usually you'll never find an exact specific one day. They might give us a range of years. Down here at the bottom I see copyright 2012. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. I'll go over to EasyBib. I'll leave the day blank because it didn't list that. Leave the month blank. Type in the year and click create citation. And again, I can see EasyBib has done the citation punctuation for me. It's up to me to make sure all of these elements are in here properly, but EasyBib will take care of the formatting, which is great. So I can see down here I have my bibliography. At this point, I could sign out, I could exit out of the internet, and if I needed to add more later, I can just re-log into EasyBib. This will be under my projects, sample work cited. I can always open it. If I go back to my all projects, and I can exit out of it. I can, if I wanted to, I could go back and add more Mentos experiment ones. Here's my sample work cited. I can always just go back, log out, log in again, open my bibliography, and keep adding citations to it. When you're all done and you're ready to turn this in, the easiest thing to do is just to click Save as a Google Doc. It's going to export it to Google Docs. You've already associated your account with it. It will ask to have permission, so I'm going to go ahead and click Grant Access. It's just asking permission to go to my Google Docs. I'm going to go ahead and go there and see how it did with the formatting. So this looks great. It's titled Works Cited. It is double spaced, properly alphabetized, hanging in dents. Looks great. The only thing you'll really need to change is the title. Make sure you put your name in here. And then the title of your assignment. Click print or share it with your teacher and you are ready to go. So that's how you can use EasyBib and Google Docs to really make your Works Cited um, pages of breeze.